Hello, my name is Simon Meyer. I'm the Visualization Technical Manager at Civic Arts, uh, which is a London-based firm of architects, landscape and urban planners. And um, this video for 3D World is a tutorial video, and I'm going to be talking about uh, a few of the landscape techniques that we use at the firm. And uh, I hope you, um, I hope you're going to enjoy it. I hope there's a few things in here that you'll find interesting. And um, I'm going to start off with showing you uh, a few examples of the of the kind of work um, that I would use this for. Um, so I've opened, uh, I've got some examples here opened, ready to go. And uh, actually, let's start in the um, in AutoCAD. Um, now we're not going to be using AutoCAD really for this tutorial. Uh, all the drawings, um, uh, there's only one drawing that we're going to be using, and um, you can XREF that in, so you don't need AutoCAD at all for this. And um, what I will say though is, if you're if you're going to be using um, some of these techniques, um, AutoCAD is a really useful tool for for getting all of this line work done in the first place. And you'll almost certainly need to know how to read a, an AutoCAD drawing if you're uh, receiving it from um, an architect for, or a, a landscape architect, for example, uh, to be able to understand what you're working with. Um, with that said, some of the techniques we're going to be using today are not specifically for architectural visualiz visualization, um, but um, th that's that's the um, the angle I'm going to approach this from. So we're going to we're going to presume for this tutorial that you've received a um, a DWG a drawing uh, of the project that we're going to be working on, uh, and we'll have a look at that uh, after these after these three examples. Uh, so this first one is um is a fairly small um, site and this is for a private house and the the house isn't x ray into this drawing um, it's not in this drawing uh, but this is where the house would sit and um, it's a it's a pretty comprehensive drawing it's got um, some details from the landscape architects here and uh, a road engineer and it's um, setting out in quite some detail uh, what what lies around the house and the site that it sits in um, and you can see we've got some contour, de um, contour data, and this is uh, in this drawing. It's at every um, it's at every two meters, and that's the red contour data there. Um, okay, so after um, after I used some of the techniques we'll be discussing in just a minute, uh, I ended up with um, uh, this file over here in 3D Max, uh, which is basically just a model of uh, it's zoomed in. It's uh, let me guess. I, I suppose it. I suppose it's a, a square about that big around the immediate site. Uh, for this project, I did um, I did two terrain um, areas. I did one that was uh, closer in. Actually, perhaps it was a bit bigger than that. Maybe it was. Maybe it was here. But I did a, a, a closer in terrain model because we were going to be altering that. Then I did one that um, that was uh, a little further out in, in the site, uh, which I knew wasn't going to wasn't going to change so much. Uh, so that closer in one, I ended up with this model uh, using that contour data. Uh, and then in this particular file, I ended up um, modeling a number of different uh, solutions. And I uh, still haven't finished actually, but here we, here we go. Here's a number of different solutions. And uh, one of the things I wanted to, um, uh, which we'll touch on later on, uh, this method is really useful for quickly generating these different variations, uh, and in this case, we were we, the architect I was working with was he wanted um, sorry she wanted to know um, sort of how much um, excavation we'd have to how, how much groundwork we'd have to do here. And one of the things Max can do is give you, um, you know, it gives you a good approximation here of the volume. So with the site cut out, um, you can see uh, two thousand odd cubic meters of dirt would have to be moved. And uh, a few different variations, and um, just quickly, one of the other things that we might be looking at is that um, this this method will produce uh, meshes with this sort of quad structure here. So it's good for doing a bit of sculpting with um, a mud box or Z brush. Um, I think I did a bit of work on here with um, Z brush, for example, to try and get it try and get it right. Um, so. There's a good example of a, a fairly small site and the contour data um, uh, from AutoCAD, and this is what we'd end up. This is the sort of model that we want to end up with in um, in 3D Max. 
Uh, now the the um, the second example is a, a larger site, and uh, we'll take a look at that drawing here. And uh, this is uh, a site that's actually just outside Istanbul, and uh, this was a competition for a um, a, a residential residential and uh, a theme park and commercial project, uh, quite a big one. Um, and we can see here, this is the uh, this is the master file that the architects used. And we can see we've got all sorts of information on here, roads, buildings, uh, landscape information, um, a, a huge amount of information. In fact, um, not all of this is useful for visualization. Uh, but what there is on here, if we zoom in, if I stop moving around and, and have a zoom in, you can see again we've got some contour data and uh, we also have some spot height data on here um, and this is what we ended up with uh, this is the final visualization for this project uh, my colleagues uh, and I in the 3D department worked on this um, it's definitely a team effort and we worked on this for I think about a month, two months in the end and uh, quite a complicated site uh, quite a big, um, a big change in um, elevation from the bottom of the site up here to the top uh, and then the uh, the last example we wanna, I want to take a quick look at is um, uh, we'll have a look at that in Max as well this third example here oh, here we go um, another big project I'll just give AutoCAD a chance to cache this um, so this is a residential project uh, amongst other things in the uh, Middle East and again a lot of information, a lot of site information and uh, I've just realized that there isn't actually any contour information on here but we um, I, th yeah, we, we, I don't have it to hand but um, I do have it, uh, I do have the model for this in um, 3D Max so we can have a look at that and we can see the uh, con contour information in the, um, we can see the result of it now it's quite a big file, I'll just give it a minute to open. Ah, so here we go, that's, that's opened and uh, in this model uh, we've got lots of different lots of different objects, we don't need any of those, just look at this geometry and um, you can see uh, this is basically it's a terrain model You also have all the road systems, or most of the road systems, um, not actually for the context, but for the project here as well. So if we have a look at this, uh, it's quite a complicated site. Um, with some, uh, built, basically built around some, some gullies, some valleys here. And you can see, using the um, technique that we're going to be looking at today, you can uh, create some quite precise um, uh, terrain models. Um, and you can see here we've started, we had to build bridges and uh, all sorts of details into this model here. But um, this, this, um, this technique basically, it's as useful for the, um, the smaller project, the, the house we looked at a minute ago. Uh, it's just as useful for these much larger projects here. And um, it can be a really, um, a really useful way of, of um, keeping on top of a, a project which is this sort of size um, because uh, it's so easy to change and um, I, I hope a little later on when you see how we do it you'll agree it's um, really quite a flexible um, flexible method okay so I'm going to open AutoCAD and have a look at the drawing I've prepared for this project and uh, you're going to see it's a lot simpler than the ones we've just seen it basically just has you know, just the things we need really which is the contour data describing the lie of the land um, it shows where the road where the road is and a driveway to a house um, which is just an outline here um, you can see it's um, overhanging a beach and um, we've I've put some contour information, I've put some height information on the contours here. 
So it's uh, going from uh, zero down at the beach to uh, six and a half meters up there. And I've also added some spot heights here, which are just um, points where I want the landscape to hit the house, uh, around the house here. So it's saying that the um, patio at, at the back of the house here is at five meters, for example. Um, that's pretty much all we need in. We're, we're not going to use AutoCAD for this project. We're, we're going to file link in this drawing and um, you won't need to use AutoCAD at all. You can just use this. It's provided. Um, the only thing I have done in AutoCAD here is these lines. I've um, moved them to the correct elevation in our AutoCAD. And that just means they're going to come in a bit quicker without having to mess about in 3D Max so they'll be in the right place. Um, we're going to we're going to close that. We don't need that open at the moment. Um, so I don't want to save that.